Well, hey, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here this evening. It is good to see you all. If this is your first time with us here at Sherwood Oaks, my name is Sean. I'm one of the ministers here. And on behalf of our church family, I just want to say welcome. We are glad that you are with us to kind of kick off uh, the holidays um, here at Sherwood Oaks. For, for many of us, though, um, Christmas Eve at Sherwood Oaks is as much of a tradition as gathering together with family around this time of year or eating way too much sugar over the next couple of days. It's just like what we do. You know, it is baked into our holiday routine. And I think the routine and the tradition of Christmas is really one of my favorite parts about this time of year. Yeah, growing up, I, uh, I had a family that uh, just had so many different traditions. I mean, it didn't matter if it was for birthday or any type of holiday. We just had traditions galore. And, and, and certainly that was true around Christmas as well. And one of the Christmas traditions that, uh, that I've actually still carried on with my family is that each year my mom would get uh, me and my little brother a Christmas ornament, and she would put the date on it. And so every year when we would go to put up our Christmas tree, it was kind of like taking a little bit of a trip down memory lane. Anybody else do that with their families? All right, I see some, some hands there. It's just a, a sweet little tradition that we've carried on with, with our girls. And when I got older and I moved out of the house, uh, my, my mom and my dad, they packed up the box full of Christmas ornaments and like, here you go. These are yours now. And, and so every year when I put up those lights, uh, it's just fun to look back and see the ornaments that my mom got uh, me as I, was, as I was growing up. And I noticed a, a trend a few years ago. I grew up, I was born in 1980. And for the first five or six years of my life, um, all of the Christmas ornaments that my mom got me involved mice. Like, I don't know why. I don't know if I was into mice or my mom was into mice, but just all of the ornaments had something to do with mice. And so we have, these are actual real ornaments from, from my Christmas tree at home that, that I got uh, growing up. So uh, we have a, a mouse here wearing a fireman outfit because that's Christmassy um, somehow. Not quite sure how, but it is. Uh, we have a mouse carrying an ornament from 1986. Uh, we have two mice playing in a bathtub for some reason. Um, so, but you know, we put that up and we, we like it. Uh, and then this is my girl's favorite. We have a mouse that is uh, dressed up like Santa Claus, but that's not the reason why they like it. The reason why is because when you turn it over, um, you see what's in Santa's bag and then you get a little bit closer look at it and you're like, Wow. Uh, in fact, I, I had never noticed this until a couple of years ago. My daughter Nora was putting this one up and she turned it over and she looked at it and she goes, ah! And I was like, what? And she goes, this doll is creepy. I'm like, whoa, you're right. I've never seen that before. Like that is giving off some serious nightmare before Christmas vibes. <laughs> And then somewhere in the late 80s, it went from mice to teddy bears, lots of teddy bears. And then we hit the 90s. And that is when mom's like, well, let's just get an ornament for whatever Sean is into that year. And so we have a, a soccer ball bearded Santa because I played soccer. Uh, we have a musical note because in middle school, uh, I played trombone. Uh, and we have this Santa that's standing on top of all of the balls, uh, just in case we don't miss a sport that I played. Uh, I used to have one. I grew up swimming, and I used to have one um, that I got sometime in high school of Santa wearing a full-body Speedo and goggles. But for some reason, we can't find that one anymore. Um, my, my wife swears that she didn't do anything with it, but I'm starting to get maybe a little suspicious that she didn't want the Speedo Santa uh, on our Christmas tree anymore. Yeah, I, I look at those ornaments, and they just bring up so many great memories uh, my mom passed away uh, a few years ago, and so that tradition of putting those up and remembering all the times of putting up the tree with, with her and my little brother and my dad, it just brings back so much joy. And, and I, I was wondering a little bit this year, like, why, why do we put up a, a Christmas tree to begin with? Like, why, why is this something that, that we do? And the story goes back in the 16th century, uh, the great Protestant reformer Martin Luther he was out walking one cold December night, kind of working through his, his Christmas sermon in his head. And as he was walking, he looked up and he was struck by the beauty of the evening sky. The, the stars were twinkling. 
that the moon was casting this light down on the snow-covered evergreens. And he thought, right here in the coldest, darkest part of winter, light is shining and life is flourishing. What a great illustration of what Jesus does for us. And so he went out the next morning and he cut down one of those evergreen trees and he dragged it into his house and he set it up and he put candles on it because that seems like a good idea. Um, Put candles on this tree and he got his six kids to all come and sit down around the tree and he read the Christmas story to them and he started teaching them the Advent lesson behind the coming of Jesus, that in Jesus came light and love and joy and peace and hope. And that's why we continue to put up a Christmas tree today. There's the tradition of it, sure, but the Christmas tree still reminds us of the light of Jesus that shines in what can sometimes feel like the darkness of our life and our world. It reminds us about the life that he came to bring to us, life when sometimes everything around us just feels dark and cold. Hundreds of years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah writes these words, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. It goes on in verse six, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And the Apostle John would start his gospel this way as he talks about Jesus coming to us, and him was life And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And so tonight we gather here to remember the light of Jesus that shines in the darkness of our world and sometimes even in the pain and the darkness of our own life. And that he comes still today to bring life to us. And we're going to reflect and we're going to sing about and we're going to read the Christmas story together and to remind us that that the goodness of the gospel and God's grace, that Jesus, Emmanuel, came to be with us, to, to remind us that that is not just a message for us, but for the world. The angels proclaim that I bring you good news for all people. The hope of Jesus is for the world. And so to remind us of that, we are going to hear the Christmas message read in four different languages tonight, Spanish, English, Chinese, and Swahili. But let tonight be an opportunity. Whatever you came in carrying, whatever burden, whatever joy, whatever darkness maybe you're feeling, that Jesus continues to bring light and life even in the midst of it. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for coming to be with us. God, thank you that in your love and your mercy and your tenderness, you entered into our world. And Lord, I don't uh, presume to know what is going on in everyone's life that sits here in this moment, whether they're in the room or they're joining us online, but God, you know. I don't know what joy they're feeling. I don't know if they're experiencing the love and hope and and, and peace and all of that goodness, God. I imagine that there are some that are here right now that are feeling burdened and feeling pain. They lost someone that they loved this year and Christmas just hasn't quite felt the same. I imagine that even right now there, there are people that are, that are in here that, that aren't even sure why they're here. They're not even sure what they believe about any of this. They're skeptical. 
God, thank you that you meet us exactly where we are, just as you did as Jesus came into this world. You meet us right where we are in our joy, in our peace, in our fears, in our doubts, our skepticism. Lord, you meet us in those moments and you continue to bring light and life. And so Jesus, would you please do that now as we worship you, as we hear from your word. Set our hearts and our minds on you, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, here's a playlist with more like it. Please be sure to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe to see more videos from Sherwood Oaks. Also, if you have a friend or family member who may find this video useful, please click the share button below. Thanks again and have a great day.